What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. This is Matt Garland, NMLS number 58700, better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. Make sure you guys like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you also download the audio to the MG the Mortgage Guy show. All right, you can go to all podcasts, audio outlets, download MG the Mortgage Guy show, and you'll get access to the audio of these YouTube videos that I'm putting out weeks before we actually put them out. All right, so link will be in the description of the video for you guys to take advantage and, and get a kind of a sneak peek of the content that we're putting out all for free it's like a free patreon right so make sure you download mg the mortgage guy show and also go to mgbookstore.com to pick up my latest books house hackonomics and the real estate investors manifesto now let's get to today's show get to today's topic i'm super excited about this conversation right so i speak with a lot of realtors and loan officers especially new folks who are looking to get in the business who are currently not licensed or they're newly licensed or been in the business less than two to three years and they need guidance and mentorship. So with this content that I have coming out in the future, I want to dedicate a lot more of it to help my real estate professionals get off the ground in their business. Right? I know we talk a lot about house hacking and real estate investing, but I don't want to leave out the real estate professionals and give you guys information that can help you scale your business, your brand, and also your GCI, your gross commission. All right. So this conversation, we're calling this um, from assistant to a broker associate. I'm bringing on a good friend of mine. She's um, a real estate associate broker for Watson Realty Co. Shout out to my partner in crime, Kiana Watson, who is the <laughs> owner of Watson Realty Co. Um, mm -hmm. So shout out to Kiana. You'll see her on Rants and Gems every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Right? <laughs> so I want to bring on my girl. Um, she went from a, assistant to associate broker and in zero to in four less than four years has also sold over $35 million worth of real estate. So I want to bring in my girl, special guest, um, one of my hookah partners when I head up ATL. <laughs> All right, let's bring on, without further ado, Miss Bree Early. Please come to the show. How are you, Bree? <laughs> I am amazing. How are you? You know, me and Bree are known for taking down some hookah and some lamb chops. <laughs> Absolutely. The best relationships are the ones that you can build from like, going from work to be able to go like to happy hour afterward. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like I really appreciate those like genuine friendships of like being able to hang out in almost any different scenery. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why I, I rock with you, Brie. I'm on a personal <laughs> level. You are definitely the real MVP. <laughs> I will give you all that. And we're going to put, fellas, don't worry. We're going to put all her contact information in the description of the video so you can go stalk her. I mean, go follow her over there on Instagram <laughs> and TikTok or whatever, whatever, wherever she's at, right? So y'all can go um, follow her. But your story is interesting, and I wanted to have this conversation. This is one of the first videos, actually, that I am I think I'm ever doing, Tooks um, and Brie. Uh, uh, dedicated strictly to the real estate professionals. So I'm really excited about this because I train and mentor real estate professionals with MG Mortgage Academy. And mm -hmm. I want to be able to just help the masses because I really feel representation is very important in our our field of what we do. There's not outside of like predominantly black areas like Atlanta, mm -hmm. you know, the black population is very small across the country and most mm -hmm. of these major cities and most of the real estate professionals don't look like us. I know when I came into business, I didn't have no mentors. I had no guidance. I had no one that looked that looked like me really that I could lean to. And right. the people that did look like me, unfortunately they were older and they were kind of like afraid, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To let information out. Cause they looked at me as competition versus right. as a young kid that's just really need guidance. So right. I want to start having these conversations. And with you, you started the business four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, tell the people who you are, where you're from, and your market you service before I keep rambling. Okay. And real quick, before I get into about myself, I have to applaud you for all of the work that you have done because I hope that you feel like you're getting your flowers regularly because we met when I started my career 
and to see the the like amount of growth that you've had over the years is inspiring to me and like allows me to keep going because you've redefined the mortgage industry and i feel wow. like that's what my goal coming into real estate was to redefine what a realtor looks like like we see a lot of black realtors on instagram but when you're actually working in the business it's still a predominantly white male industry absolutely so I come in with tattoos and a nose ring and hoops and <laughs> braids, <laughs> everything. Right, right. Coming in as, you know, myself, I, I can see that it is off-putting to some people, but it's like, I want to encourage the other people who look like me to do the same thing. So I just want to applaud you for everything that you have done, the information, the just everything. It's it's amazing. Now, I appreciate that. I appreciate the flowers. I appreciate the love. Um, Thank you for the kind words. But it's saying about me, Bray. <laughs> this okay. is this, this about you now. Talk to the okay. people. Tell them who you are, girl. <laughs> okay. So I am Bria Early. Um, I'm originally born and raised in Northridge, California. Um, I graduated from Tennessee State University in 2012 with my degree in speech communication. And I lived in Nashville for a while. And then I moved to Atlanta in 2015. I was just kind of over Nashville. It's just kind of like a college town. So once I had graduated, I was like, I kind of want to get somewhere in a market where I feel like I can really catapult myself no matter what industry I'm in. Um, so I moved here 2015. I got my real estate license in 2017 and I purchased a home for myself and then I didn't do anything else with it. Um, so 2019 was really the start of my full time career in real estate. Um, the markets that I service are really anywhere in Georgia, because even if I can't do it, then I have referral partners in almost every single county. Um, but as far as me specifically, I'd say Atlanta and the kind of surrounding metro areas. So like Gwinnett County, DeKalb, Fulton, Cobb, pretty much an hour and a half outside of Atlanta. Um, okay. And I I service every price point. So I'm I'm well versed in, you know, three hundred thousand dollar homes that are starter homes for my clients and then secondary, you know, buyers that are purchasing their forever home or their kind of transition home in the million dollar range. It just whatever you're whatever you're approved for, as long as you want to work with me exclusively, then I'm ready to go. All right, cool. So you got in the business twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. And you started off as an assistant mm -hmm. to Kiana Watson. Let's talk about that. How did that even happen? So I was with Metro Brokers at the time and the training that they were providing, it was okay, but I felt like it wasn't tailored to me and what I had envisioned for my career. I didn't want to do door knocking. I didn't really want to do cold calling. I kind of just wanted the business to come to me as, as ridiculous as that sounds, that was what I wanted. So I kind of got on Instagram and started looking at different top producing realtors at the time. And there were a number of black women that were, you know, that were producing a whole lot, but I kind of honed in on Kiana because I just fell in love with her personality, to be honest. I could tell that when she had started videos, she was like genuinely laughing. She was posting her husband a lot. So I was like, okay, they're probably in like a really solid, good marriage. There won't be any jealousy here or anything weird. I just kind of felt like she was gonna be a really sincere mentor. So I reached out to her um, and at the time, she had actually just added Kiara. She kind of announced like, okay, I have a new assistant. Her name is Kiara, blah, blah, blah. So they were doing seminars and open houses and stuff like that. So I reached out to her a number of times on Instagram. She didn't respond. And one day she posted her and Kiara were both going to be hosting open houses. So I looked at the address she posted, showed up to the open house, because at this point I was just like, as long as I can get in front of her, I know that we'll be able to organically connect. And if she can just kind of like feel my personality, I know she'll fall in love with me. And then we can just like take this to the moon. So I showed up at the open house and naturally she was very taken aback, kind of like, 
girl, what are you doing here popping up like this? And I was like, well, you know, I've been reaching out to you via Instagram and da-da-da. So she was like, okay, tell me a little bit about yourself. So I gave her my spiel and she was like, okay, let's meet in my office next week. And she still didn't contact me. So I emailed <laughs> her again. I, could, like, I was very, very persistent. You, you was persistent as how? I've been persistent my whole life. Like even with my parents, if I wanted to like, you know, push my curfew back to a later time or something like that, like I would stay on my parents. Like, look, my grades are this, I've done this. Like I've always just had that personality type. So it's, it's worked out in real estate. Um, but she finally, she got back to me and asked me to come in for an interview. And we talked and we actually connected over the book Black Privilege by Charlemagne the God. Mm -hmm. um, I had said something about it and she was like, oh my gosh, I literally just finished reading that. So we just kind of had a really organic conversation and she was like, okay, it's Super Bowl weekend. So I don't really want you moving around Atlanta right now. Let's wait to start. So I said, okay, when I got home, I was like, what difference does it make that it's Super Bowl weekend? Let's start right now. So she was like, all right, tom tomorrow morning, come pick up this lockbox and I'm going to give you the address to take it to. And I had never opened up a lockbox. I didn't know how I had never even held one. So after she kind of gave me that opportunity, I just, I figured it out and we hit the ground running. So you started doing all her little BS tasks that she didn't want to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were, you Which was huh? were, were you getting paid to do this or no? So at the interview, I told her like, you don't have to pay me. I just want to be in the you know right rooms with the right energy and just kind of pick up the knowledge. And she was like, I don't believe in and people working without compensation. So I don't know exactly what the pay structure will be, but you will be getting compensated. So it ended up being um, basically like a percentage of whatever the commission was on the houses that we closed. Okay. So, which at the time she was doing probably about three to four closings a month. So it, it wasn't enough to pay my bills, but I had already had a savings that I said, you know what, this is gonna be for this time period where I'm just kind of learning and getting the business and the money will come later when it's time. So earn while you learn. Learn while you earn, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that, I like that. So you sacrifice, you did what you had to do, you did all the grunt work, you started off as an assistant. How long was your assistant for? Okay, so she had a listing that was in Alpharetta and it had been sitting. And it was about a little less than half a million. So the listing was sitting and she was, you know, talking to me about it. And I was like, well, why don't we host an open house? Since you're already listing it, I'll host the open house. Any buyers that we get, I'll, you know, represent the buyer and we can do a co-op deal. So that was when like my manifestation skills like kicked in overdrive because I was like banking everything on this open house. I had no other way to get clients. So she kind of prepped me on what to do. She said, find out everything about that community that the house is in, find out everything about the school district, become the expert for that area so that when people come in and they ask you questions, you're prepared. So that's exactly what happened. There were only three people that came to the open house. One was um, someone from out of state. They, they already had a realtor. Another person was an agent coming to you know, just preview the house for themselves. And then the third person was a family with two little girls. So when they had told me that they had daughters, that's when I was talking about the school districts and all that kind of stuff. Long story short, they ended up emailing me that night and asked me, did I, was I accepting clients right now? Because I was such an expert, they wanted to work with me, you know, if I had the time. And I remember calling Kiana, like, can you believe they think I have like so many clients that I wouldn't even be able to service them, like blah, blah, blah. So I was just like ecstatic. So we ended up getting them pre-approved. Um, that was probably the second week in February and they closed the first week in April. And then after then I kind of had a closing just about every month or about two closings a month after that ever since that that one deal and that one deal was the one that you say you know what i can do this i can become full-time oh for sure absolutely because i mean i do regret not staying in the background with her just a little bit longer because i learned a lot through trial and error with my own clients i wish i would have learned more just from her transactions but i also kind of don't regret it because that helped me to where i am now once i kind of got that first like 
okay, I can actually do this by myself. Because she was representing the interests of the seller, there was only so much that she could help me with. And yeah. we were still, you know, negotiating as colleagues. So I was like, okay, if I can kind of do this without a whole lot of help, I know that once I'm actually an expert and I know the contracts like the back of my hand and I really understand the business, I'll be able to kill it. So I was her assistant basically for about 45 days. <laughs> 45 days as an assistant. <laughs> yeah. I got with her in February and then I had that first closing in April. And then after that, I just kind of got busy. You bet, you, you bet on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Once I started creating content and I kind of understood how to create content for target audiences, that was like that. That was that. That was a wrap. All right, so let's get into this. Now you 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 go be an assistant. You you stop being an assistant. You get your first deal, your first year in business. You close how much in business? Three million dollars, right? Three million. Uh huh. Second Which year you did exactly enough to qualify me for the top producers gala. So that's like a really big thing here in Atlanta. The Atlanta Realtors Association basically has tiers of production based on either the number of transactions or the sales volume. So that was my goal was to either close, it was either 12, you had to close 12 transactions or $3 million. So I kind of qualified with both. I did 15 transactions and closed 3 million in sales volume. So to be on the top producers list my very first year was like, I, I couldn't even believe it. Yeah, I mean, look, and, and for folks who are watching this who really don't know, <laughs> real estate agents don't close a lot of deals, right? There's a, there's, on average, our agent probably closes one deal a year, two deals a year, because um, mm -hmm. there's so many of them. So mm -hmm. for you to come out the gate in your first year, do 15 for 3 million in your price points, that's great. And then the next year you did how much? The next year was 7 million. Yeah. So you seven did 7 million, million a year too. You doubled up. More than doubled, because doubled would have been six. So I more than doubled because I was like seven point four, seven point five, or something like that. Let's not discount that four or five. We need every penny, bro. <laughs> we need every penny. All right. So, but let's let's talk about this, right? Because this is a very important transition. Not too many people can can double up their business and only their sophomore season, um, in this game. So, mm -hmm. what did you do? Give us three steps right now. Three actionable sets book point look at your camera we're gonna yes. clip this thing up all right <laughs> give me three clips Bree. three okay. tips that okay. you can give rookie agents that are looking at your story right now mm -hmm. how do they double their business up okay three tips the number one that and, and i feel like it's so cliche but i can't there's no other explanation for my success so number one would have to be manifestation. I'm very big on everything happens twice. It happens first in your mind and then it happens in reality because everything that, that has happened in my life that is very intentional was intentional because I was focused on it. Like I was laser focused on what I wanted. So, and with manifestation, I don't mean just like how it's trendy right now and people are just kind of saying affirmations or posting positive quotes. Manifestation takes a lot of work and it's something that has to be a part of your routine. So every day I used to say, I will not struggle for clients. Clients are going to come to me easily. They're going to be loyal. They're going to gravitate to me. They're going to be pre-approved. They're going to have funds. I am a top producing realtor. Like everything that I was saying was happening. I was saying like me and Kiana will continue to build an organic relationship. Kiara and I are going to be close. We're going to stay tight knit. Money will not come between it. Like everything that I was saying, I was really cultivating the career that I wanted through manifestation. So verbally saying affirmations and then also closing my eyes and visualizing what I wanted. So even if I would have a rocky closing, I would just literally close my eyes and be like, we're going to close on this date. Samantha Johnson is closing on December 15th. Samantha John and I would just say it and say it and then I'd get a clear to close email and I'd be like, yes. And then I'd be grateful <laughs> so that I could continue to kind of manifest these type of things. All right, so, so step one, one, manifestation. Number two, I would definitely say 
creating the appropriate content for your target audience. Content creation number two. Content creation. So with that, what I mean specifically by that is, and I always give my classes and stuff like that this example. If you're looking for someone to, to braid your hair, you're not going to choose the person that's only posting a silk press. Just like if you want a certain kind of cut with your beard or, you know, whatever the case, you're not going to go to someone who you don't see consistently posting that. So when you kind of reverse it and think, what are these consumers looking for? Then you know what to say to them. So at the time, you know, when you're new in in real estate or really any career, you're going to kind of get the low hanging fruit because you're new. I, I didn't I hadn't established a reputation. I hadn't really like I, I wasn't well known in the business. So I decided to go for down payment assistance. That's the easiest thing. All you have to have is a credit score within a certain income bracket that most people are already in and you get the down payment for free. So it was like, if I can basically give these people the down payment that they need, why would they not want to buy a house? So I went heavy on down payment assistance. We got $15,000 in this county. This is the maximum purchase price. All you need is credit. And then I've worked with lenders to get these clients to the right credit score if they weren't already there. Mm. So I feel like through that, through building the right type of content, really helped build my audience and... It, it helped me build build a rapport with my audience. They trust me. Before they even reach out to me, they can look through 100 videos and see that I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to protect your best interest. And I have a solution for the biggest problem in home ownership, the down payment. Niche, niche down your content to the audience that you want to speak to. Correct. Because a lot of people, this, a lot of new realtors go wrong. They start posting luxury houses. They start posting all this luxury information. What you have to remember about luxury buyers is that they're extremely educated. A lot of them, once you start getting into a certain price point, that's normally not your first house. You're normally not buying a $2 million house as your very first one. Mm -hmm. So if these are seasoned buyers that are very educated, they're going to be able to read through the BS and see like, they're posting a bunch of houses, but they're not posting any closings. They're posting pretty houses, but they're not talking about anything or any education. So I didn't want to go straight to that. I'd rather work with the regular everyday people who I knew could connect with me. I like that. What's step three? Step three is... Step three, I'm going to say, is educating yourself. Everything that you learn in real estate school, you might as well throw it out the window because you're never going to use it. Mm. Like I failed the test twice <laughs> because there's a really large math portion on there. And I'm actually great at math, but there are a lot of formulas that you have to remember. Formulas for calculating property taxes, formulas for calculating all this stuff that you would never have to do because we have lenders who are going to estimate what property taxes are and all that kind of stuff. So once I kind of realized, okay, now I'm in the, I'm in the field. None of this stuff that I learned is, is really helping me. I need to figure out how to become the expert myself. And Kiana always tells this story. She had a, um, a, a home buying consultation with someone and the way she regurgitated all of the information from contracts, the process, the timeline, everything you need to know to buy a home. I literally asked her, I said, the next one that you do, can I record it on my phone? And she said, of course. I recorded it on my phone and I played it back until I memorized it. I used to read contracts almost every single day to be able to understand who does this contract protect? What are the ways that I can terminate? What are the ways that one of my buyers could possibly lose earnest money? I just wanted to be an expert so that if anything went wrong, if mm, hit the fan, I would be able to still navigate like a seasoned real estate professional. And I feel like that has helped me because when clients work with me, I've never lost a client's earnest money in almost five years, which is unheard of. Most agents have, even in their rookie year, lost someone earnest money, never, not even one time. So I feel like when clients have a great experience with you and they can tell how educated you are, they're going to tell all of their friends. So whenever I take a hiatus from Instagram or if Instagram goes down for a couple days or, or the 
numbers are off and all these kind of new algorithms and all that. I don't have to worry about that at all whatsoever because I've solidified a reputation with my actual buyers so that they're going to continue to tell everyone and my business will soon be probably majority referral based just from clients having great experiences. So within your first four years, you went from zero to 35 million. You pretty much went from three to seven. I think you said nine. Then you're going to do over almost 15 million this year. And mm -hmm. now you're starting to see the benefits of what you just said, that referrals now coming in because exactly. it's clear, it's clear that it's, it's happening. The two, your two and three steps are clear as happening, the referral base and the content because mm -hmm. You're getting leads mm -hmm. all the time. You're getting the buyers that you want. You're mm -hmm. educating them. And now mm -hmm. they're referring you once you close mm -hmm. and send you more deals. So you yep. manifested. You said you wanted you wanted the business to come to you. You didn't want to cold call. You didn't want to door knock. You mm -hmm. didn't want to do any of that stuff. And now mm -hmm. you manifested everything you said four years ago is happening today. Absolutely. And what is like the most flattering thing to me is repeat clients. So a lot of clients that I closed in 2019, they purchased houses, sold them either last year or this year. So the fact that I was at the top of their mind, they didn't get on Instagram to find a new realtor or try someone else or whatever. They feel the loyalty to me lets me know that not only do they have such a great experience, but they trust that I'll be able to represent them on the other side of actually selling. How so, are you building when, in, in a time where buyers are not loyal at all? Right. Sellers are not loyal at all. In an oversaturated market, because everybody yeah. knows a realtor. Everybody's cousin is a realtor. Everybody, everybody knows. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. People are so unloyal because there's just so many options. How mm -hmm. have you developed this loyalty with your clients? Like, what are you doing that is separating you from the pack? I have to say that I treat all my clients the same in every price point. So you'll also find that a lot of realtors are doing minimal work at a lower price point and they're overexerting themselves at higher price points. For me, no matter what you're approved for, the process has to be the same because it's still a real estate transaction. We still have a due diligence period. We still have um, an appraisal contingency, a finance contingency, closing day. So the only thing that kind of varies are maybe like the actual closing gifts, because of course I'm giving, you know what I'm saying? Bigger gifts for a bigger commission essentially, but the process and the feeling is still the same. I'm still going to try to have my videographer there so that you can have this monumental moment you know, recorded. And as a memory, I'm also going to make sure you get a gift. We have brunch, we pop champagne. I'm going to try to make sure that everything is literally the exact same. You're still getting weekly updates. You're still, it's still the same customer service, no matter the price point. So you're, you're creating more of an experience right? versus you're buying a house. You're coming right. to me for the Brie early experience. Right. Correct. And to know that even if you're buying your first home, I'm still going to protect you and your earnest money the exact same way. So if, if, if I have a buyer who has $5,000 earnest money or 100,000, which at different price points, it can be that drastic, I'm still making sure you've got the exact same calendar notifications. I'm still touching base with the attorney. I'm still checking in with you at the end of every contingency to make sure that you're having a, an educated, seamless process as far as everything that is in my control. I love it. The Brie early experience. <laughs> so that's how you build up the loyalty with these people is mm -hmm. you give them a whole experience. You give them, you create, you're creating Raven fans, mm -hmm. right? A wise mm -hmm. man once told me satisfied clients will bankrupt your business. You got to create um, Raven fans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I like to always use the story when the Yankees built a new stadium in the Bronx years ago, people were so pissed off mm -hmm. that they were, that ticket prices was going up. They got this whole new stadium. It was a lot of commotion, but mm -hmm. people still, it's been sold out ever since. Right. right? Exactly. It's, and because these people are raving fans. And mm -hmm. I think as real estate professionals, we have to create that same type of um, energy from mm -hmm. the people we working with. And I think oftentimes we just look at people as loan numbers or or dollar signs or commission mm -hmm. checks. And sometimes it's, it's, it's easy to get caught up in the money aspect of what we do. But, if you, but you got to you gotta treat people like people and give them a wild experience. 
Mm -hmm, absolutely. Because I was even talking, I, I did, um, I taught one of Kiana's classes kind of on a similar topic. So, and I, I, I always talk to new agents about this because I know how the mind works of a new agent. You just want to service luxury. You want those big commission deals. $1 million, a $1 million house, the 3% of that is 30,000. Mm -hmm. Do we all want a bunch of $30,000 paydays? Of course. But the amount of people that make enough money and have the minimal amount of debt to qualify for what a monthly mortgage is on a million dollar house, those are the two percenters. Those are the people that are making well over six figures, almost seven figures annually. A $500,000 house, 3% of that is 15,000. So even if you close two $500,000 houses, you still got the same commission as one $1 million house. So as long as the checks are clearing, it doesn't really matter how many different people I service or what price points, the, the commissions are still closing. So it's like, I, I don't want new agents to get so fixated on, I got to service celebrities. I got to service that. Those people are, it, it's very, it's a very small pool of those buyers. You're going to have more people that are going to come to you that are approved for 300,000. If you close three 300,000 deals, that's 9,000 a commission, we're back at 27,000. So it's like, if you're still going to make the same money, what difference does it make what they're approved for, where they're looking at? A lot of agents also want to service different areas. I have a car, so I'm going to gas up my car and drive and meet you to wherever you want to look for a house. It's like, I just don't understand how so many people turn down the business. And I think that also, um, makes my clientele and my audience a lot more trusting of me is that I'm not just looking at you as a number. It's not just like, oh, I'm only servicing luxury now. They've seen my growth and they've seen my transition in this career field and they still see I'm closing the regular houses. I'm not at the point yet where I'm gonna turn down any money. So maybe I'll get there at some point, I don't know. But $15,000 has never been like chump change to me. So now nah, volume, look, so. volume solves all problems. I tell people this all the time. The more volume you do, the better your life will be, right? right. And that's how you survive in these type of economical swings that we're going through right now. Is mm -hmm. the, it's just that volume because even if you take a hiccup on on a deal, mm -hmm. uh, all your production is reduced because of the market conditions. Like everybody's production has reduced. Um, right. when you have rates that skyrocket the way is that is it has, but you have to have the volume. So if I was doing, you know, ten deals a month, if mm -hmm. I lose thirty forty percent of that, I could still do five deals a month, six deals exactly. a month. Right, I could still make money. But if you were focused on, I'm gonna just do these big deals. And you was only doing two or three of those. Now you go up to one, maybe none. Like exactly. you damn near in poverty. So, you know, I want everybody to always remember your your tax returns will never say how many deals you close. It's only right. gonna say how much money you made exactly. at the end of the day. It's not exactly. gonna say how many units on your on your um on mm -hmm. your um tax returns. So volume solves our problem. So let me ask you this, right? Mm -hmm. You you got this going, you're doing your thing. You're mm -hmm. killing the game right now. Where do you see your business going in 2023? Now that the market has corrected itself, and this is your first market swing, so you're mm -hmm. going through the motions like all new people who <laughs> go through this, right? So yes. we got to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly as well. Like, How do you plan on surviving this market? What are you going to do differently coming up in 2023 to continue to excel and mm -hmm. do more volume than you did the year before? So I'm going to, I have one agent on my team right now. I'm going to add two more. Um, I'll probably add them this month and then start training in January because as I continue in this field, I know that once interest rates decrease and the amount of people that are going to be rushing to buy a house again, I know that I probably won't be able to take everyone. So if I have a team of educated, ambitious, dedicated agents, just like myself, we're not leaving any money on the table. We're not, we're not having to, um, not be able to handle the amount of volume. So really preparation for that, for expanding my team. Um, number two, definitely keeping the client experience consistent. Um, because in times like this, where 
you know, is, is still pretty oversaturated. I want to make sure that clients are still receiving the exact same level of customer service and still receiving a consistent experience. So again, no matter the price point, focus on that customer service, focus on making sure that my processes are in order and it's going to make what can be like a really challenging time because buying a home can be challenging depending on your situation i want to do everything in my power to make sure it's as easy as possible like when my clients say like this was so easy or like i'm surprised i had so many ideas in my head about this this and that but you made it xyz i'm like okay i did my job if they feel like this wasn't like an unhappy time because there's so many people who have bought a house and they had a terrible experience. And a lot of clients that I get will say, I started out working with another realtor. They didn't answer the phone. They didn't want to drive to, you know, wherever I picked the house at. They didn't come to my closing. I didn't hear from them once we went under contract. And I'm just like, how are y'all running a full fledged business like this? So I want to make sure that customer service is at the core of my business. Cause I've seen that that works. That's going to keep my numbers where they are where they're at and continue to grow and then of course content creation i got to make sure i am remaining the expert in a volatile market and in an ever-changing market because there's so much information out there and so many people are going to sit on google and try to find out as much as they can before they get to a realtor that i want to be like a source of google i want them to find me using ato realtor hashtag on instagram or whatever and through the amount of videos that i've made they feel truly educated and again they trust me to work with me out the gate i don't have to prove myself or interview or anything like that they see this girl knows what she's talking about mm. let's so mm. become the subject market expert absolutely build your team mm -hmm. triple down on content Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like one of my biggest regrets and obviously I wouldn't have known it then hindsight is always 2020, but I wish I would have had a team in place in 2020 because I lost a lot of business just because people were like, I feel like you're busy or how many clients do you have? And I would tell them and they're like, okay, I'm looking to work with somebody who has a lot less. Like at the height of 2020, I had had, um, I think about 11 or 12 people under contract simultaneously. So, and with that, that's crazy because you're getting one inspection comes back, then another appraisal report comes back lower. You got to renegotiate that. Then someone's finance contingency. And it's just like, it's so many different moving parts. I was just a one woman show. So now knowing what I know now and being prepared for what is going to happen in the market when interest rates decrease, I want to make sure that I'm prepared. I have enough assistance or I have a strong enough team that you will get the Bria early experience, even if you're not working with me directly. If you'd like to work with me and you know maybe I have too many clients or whatever the case, work with one of my team members and you will get the exact same experience. And I'll be on the back end kind of hovering over them because I'm just a micromanager, so. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think those are three, three great areas to focus on moving mm -hmm. into the new year. I think mm -hmm. everybody needs to focus on and don't lose sight of systems. Systems are very important. Um, mm -hmm. I, the pandemic year has made us all adjust because everybody's volume went crazy. And, mm -hmm. you know, your business is not really meant to, in the beginning, to deal with that type of volume. Even my business wasn't even built for it. I had to restructure a whole bunch of things. Right. Um, so systems and operations, standard operating procedures are very important. Um, mm -hmm. for all business owners. And you have mm -hmm. to treat this as you, your business if you're coming yeah. into the real estate field. So mm -hmm. great, great tips. And I, I look forward to seeing you grow. What are you, what you trying to hit next year? 20 million? Yes, 20. 20 is like the magic number. And it's like this year I was on pace to do that, but my best friend moved out here and my mom. And it was like, okay, sacrifice, you know, hanging out with them and all this kind of stuff or meet my sales goals. And I just kind of chose family and friends. Like that's just literally the honest to God truth. I literally stopped posting and just kind of took a step back and really honed in on my personal relationships. Cause as a, as an entrepreneur, I could be, I'm in my office right now. I could be in here until midnight and not even realize the time yeah. going through emails, readjusting, you know, my templates and just working on the back end. There's always something to do, especially with wanting to perfect processes and systems that it's like, I'll never 
have any quality of life. I'll never be able to kind of enjoy those relationships. And I feel like money is one of those things. I'll always be able to get more money. I'll always be able to work more. I can't get time back. That's the one thing we don't ever get any more of. So it's like with my mom and my best friend moving out here, I just kind of said, you know what, let's take some trips. Let's go out to eat a whole bunch. Let's, you know. Priorities so is very important in life. And sometimes you got to prioritize the people that mean the most to you versus the business. So it was probably well needed um, mm -hmm. break from the business because this business, you pour so much into other people and trying to help other people achieve their goals and them build generational wealth and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You often forget to do the same for yourself. So I'm, exactly. I'm happy. And I recommend when anybody who's going to watch this, when you get, to, if you're a real estate professional and you making some money, Take mm -hmm. some time off. Take some time to yourself because it's 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 well deserved. We work hard, and we yeah. deserve to kind of like have a mental break and mm -hmm. just kind of. And then you also get that opportunity to really see your business and see exactly what you want to do and where you want to go with it. So mm -hmm. kudos to you for recognizing that you needed that that R and R, and you had mm -hmm. to prioritize your family. So that's dope. Thank that's you. Dope. And just like you said, it does allow you to kind of step back because I said, okay, that's when I decided to redo. Moscato and Mortgage Mondays. I said, let me kind of elevate this, take this to the next level. So I kind of took my time creating the content because I wasn't pressed on, I got to post this on this day. And I got to, I said, let me just kind of designate the time for the content, do some photo shoots, kind of build up the content so that once I'm back on social media, there's no lack of it. I have like a surplus of things that I want to talk about and stuff like that. So that was a really big thing too, of, of, of taking a break and being able to reassess my business as a whole. Nah, I love it. I love it. I'm super proud of you, Brie. Keep going. 20 million is coming in 2023. We're going to manifest that. it. We're going to close our <laughs> eyes. We're going to let's close our eyes right now, Brie, and let's manifest this 20 million together. Absolutely. We are going to get you 20 million in 2023. <laughs> I believe it. I receive it. I, I, I see it for you, Brie. So we're hey. going to get that 20 M's <laughs> and you're going to continue your trajectory of being one of the top real estate professionals in the state of Georgia, not just the city yeah. of Atlanta, but in the state of Georgia. So Thank you. tell everybody how to follow you. Okay. So my Instagram, everything is actually my first and last name. Literally my Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, everything is Bria, B-R-I-A, early, E-A-R-L-E-Y. And then Instagram has an underscore. But once you type in Bria early, you'll be able to find it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all make sure y'all tap in with my girl, Bree, and make sure y'all show her some love. And if you're looking to purchase any real estate in the state, uh, in the city of Atlanta, holla <laughs> at, or AKA Wakanda, holla at <laughs> Bree. She'll definitely take care of you. I've, cl I've closed with her before. I vouch for her. Y'all can work with her too. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for y'all. This has been a dope episode. We're going to have some more content like this for y'all. So again, make sure y'all like, comment, share, subscribe, download um, the audio of this or all the audios of everything I put on my YouTube channel at MG The Mortgage Guy Show. And make sure you go to mgbookstore.com to pick up some books. All right? Peace. Have back. I'm ready to come back. <laughs> coming soon. Coming soon. Okay. <laughs>